In a previous video, I spoke of Neji and his philosophical views, which greatly influenced his life. But I neglected to mention an important instance in which these ideas were challenged. In the iconic confrontation, Neji reveals the deeply rooted philosophy that governed his entire life. The idea that fate is absolute, unchangeable, and cruel. To Neji, life is a predetermined script where your birth dictates your worth. He himself is trapped by the very system that the Huga clan enforces, born into the branch family, forever bound to serve the main house. This is symbolized by the cursed seal on his forehead, a physical and spiritual reminder that this is his destiny. When Neji looks at Naruto, he sees someone who, in his eyes, is similarly fated. Naruto, the so-called dead last, is defined by his failures, his status as an outcast and the weight of being a Jinchuriki. To Neji, Naruto is not different from him a person chained by fate. But when Neji sees these chains as inescapable, Naruto challenges this very notion. Here's where the dichotomy comes in. Neji believes that power and talent are inherited, that certain individuals are born to rise while others are destined to remain in the shadows. His cousin Hinata, for example, is of the main house, destined for greatness solely because of her birthright. Even if Neji is stronger than her, Neji's entire worldview is built around the idea that talent and strength are predestined. He believes that no matter how much someone like Naruto might try, someone born a loser will always remain a loser. This is fate. But Naruto? Naruto doesn't see it that way. When Neji tells Naruto that fate is unchangeable, that their roles in life are already written, Naruto's response cuts straight to the core. If you hate your fate, then do something about it. For Naruto, it's not about accepting the circumstances you are born into. It's about fighting against them with everything you have. To him, the only thing that truly matters is the will to change. It's a stark contrast to Neji's fatalism. And yet, the irony here is striking. Both characters are, in some ways, right. In the world of Naruto, power is often tied to fate. Many of the strongest shinobi are born into powerful clans, blessed with keke genkai or unique talents. Take the Uchiha, the Senju. The Hyuga. These clans have generational power that seems to affirm Neji's belief that certain people are just born with advantages. Even Naruto, the one preaching against fate, was destined from birth to be special. He's the son of the fourth Okage, the vessel of Okurama, and later, the child of prophecy. No matter how much Naruto claims he is fighting against fate, his story is drenched in the idea that he was always meant for greatness. This highlights a subtle but significant truth about the world of Naruto. Fate and effort are constantly intertwined. Naruto does possess immense power, but his journey is about how he chooses to use it. In contrast, Neji's fatalism prevents him from seeing his own potential beyond the cage he believes he's locked in. His strength, his genius, it's undeniable. He was a prodigy, able to use the gentle fist technique with more mastery than many in the main house. Yet his conviction that his fate was sealed limited him. The mental cage Neji was trapped in was more suffocating than the physical one. Even the Hokages, who symbolized the pinnacle of power and leadership in Konoha, seemed to be bound by fate. Many of them are connected through bloodlines, mental student relationships, and prophecies. Ashurama Senju, the first Okage, passed down his will to his successor, with each generation echoing the same themes of peace and protection. Naruto himself, as the seventh Okage, was preordained to continue that legacy. But again, the difference lies in how they chose to embrace or defy their fate. Neji's proclamation that everyone is bound by fate isn't entirely wrong in the context of the Naruto world. Strength talent, and destiny are often handed down through bloodlines. But Naruto's counter-argument that you have the power to change your path if you fight hard enough carries just as much weight. Naruto's belief is that while fate might set the stage, it's your choices that determine the final act. He may have been destined for greatness, but it's his relentless effort and refusal to back down that truly define him. What makes the fight between Neji and Naruto so profound is that it forces us to question the role of destiny in shaping who we are. Neji the bird trapped in a cage represents a deterministic worldview, where circumstances are unchangeable and fighting against them is futile. Naruto the perpetual underdog represents the idea that fate might be a starting point, but it's not the end. He embodies the belief that hard work, determination, and self-belief can transcend any predetermined fate. The outcome of their battle is quite telling. Naruto through sheer willpower defeats Neji proving that even someone labeled a loser can rise above their circumstances. But the victory isn't just physical, it's ideological. 
In defeating Neji, Naruto shows him that fate isn't as rigid as he believed, that even someone trapped in a cage can break free if they have the courage to challenge it. Yet, the deeper question remains, is Naruto truly defying fate? Or is he simply fulfilling a different version of it? His rise to greatness seems almost fated, his strength and leadership predestined. Even the prophecy that names him as the one who will bring peace seems to validate the idea that Naruto was always special, always meant to be more than just the dead last. In the end, perhaps Neji and Naruto are both right in their own ways. Fate may set the foundation but how we build upon it is up to us.